about three or four o'clock in the morning, you know, you could tell the wind was whipping outside. It was, it was really getting noisy from the wind. A lot of rain. I mean, it was just coming down in, in blankets. The very first thing is just realizing that the day after the storm stopped, that things were a lot worse than what I personally had anticipated. It's unlike anything I've ever seen in my community. Nothing I hope to ever see again. Trees were down. I was having to go on just like one lane of road. McDonald's was flooded, Chick-fil-A, Ingalls. We lost all communications. So when I say communications, I mean no network, no phones, no cell signal, cell, cell towers were knocked out. We had massive road infrastructure damage. We had communication challenges. We had power failures and internet failures and landline failures. Our 911 system failed in the county. Um, we did not have enough medic trucks available. We didn't have enough law enforcement available. So I finally made it home and uh, seen this huge tree that come through my son's bedroom. I mean, it was just, you know, it felt like, it was, it was devastating, you know. It, just, it was like, with everything else going on, I was like, well, and then I stepped back and I realized, well, you know what, your son wasn't in the room. He didn't, didn't get hurt. It's just material things. So I cut the tree off my house. I couldn't get to uh, my apartment, so I had to turn around and uh, I uh, suddenly, it, it felt like I hit something. And then I got hit by a wall of water and it washed me uh, over an embankment that was like a four foot drop and actually was saved by some trees because it's not a river normally. And I was able to swim out and hitchhike back to the hospital uh, and sort of moved into the hospital. This is completely different. I've never seen this level of destruction. I think what I'll remember most is just the way that people showed up for each other. Just how everyone came together and how everyone like pulled through to like work in the midst of this chaos. I mean, the stories you know, go far and beyond what I can say like right now, but as far as, you know, these guys sleeping in the hospital didn't leave for days. That's after he had to swim out of his car and then come to work and work continued another four nights or so. You know, multiple ER nurses that didn't leave the hospital for days, sleeping, just changing into new hospital scrubs. One of them was even like was sleeping in his van in the parking garage so he could walk back in and make it to work. We had a lot of people coming in just to eat and we fed them for free. And I saw that time and time again. And I saw those guys in there working like that, that like I have never seen them work before with a smile on their face, never complaining. They just did a great job. And I just thought that was just, just phenomenal. And I think that meant a whole lot to the people in our community. With one burner and one oven, we served over 7,000 meals in a week. We had our plant operations team trying to remove landslides with a snowplow. We had um, Baker Center employees, which is a physician practice, covering in our emergency department. We had psychiatric nurses covering the oxygen tent and doing overflow. Providers from all specialties were doing triage and emergency evaluation. Um, and all of those people did that with no complaints. We had people that worked almost 20 days straight. These people were doing that when they didn't know if their own families were okay. We didn't think about who was doing what, we just all did it. It wasn't, oh, you're a nurse, you do that, you're a doctor, you do that. We were all working very hard to do whatever we could for the patient. It didn't matter who was doing it, it's just as long as it was getting done. Just working together, you did, you did anything you needed to do. Um, and you know, one of the main values of UNC is one great team and that was certainly displayed here. Um, it wasn't just, uh, you know, it was here locally but also as, a, as, a, as an entire organization. Just the whole community really feels like we're supported down here by UNC and Chapel Hill and also UNC Caldwell locally, which is really important for us right now. We were very fortunate, first of all, let me say, that the hospital was able to recover as quickly as they were. I think that's our obligation to the community to make sure that we're ready to respond to things like that. It was really good to see that we were able to do that. The way the community showed up for the hospital, the way that UNC showed up for us with the support. Every meeting there's like, how many Walmart trucks do we need to send today with, with, with supplies? And it was just seeing that, that outreach of support coming from the main UNC hospital to us because it was, it was, you know, it gave us hope. It, it, it gave us a lot of hope. 
you know, because it was, when you see a community pulling together and you know somebody's got your back, you, you can do anything. We're here to take care of people. We're here because we care about people. And events like this, I think, are a great reminder of our why and our true north and why we do what we do in healthcare.